They do not adore him. There are many sacrileges committed against him. Then I'd like to speak about prayer. Pray much. Pray much. All prayers bother demons. They don't like prayers. They hurt them. Prayer is powerful against demons and evil spirits. Many Catholics are not praying enough. They're not praying. Many are too involved with the things of the world. The world snatches so many souls. Catholics should be praying. They should be in church. They should be spending time before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. They should receive Holy Communion worthily and frequent the sacraments. Christ is very, very hurt by humanity. The creatures he created to love him do not honor him and forget that he died on the cross for their sins. My dearly beloved in Christ, time is so short. People should be praying all the time. The time is short. Pray for the sick, the lonely, the homeless. Extend a hand of compassion to all those who have not been blessed as others have. Some have no food, nowhere to lay their head. This is why it's so hard for the rich to enter heaven. They do not share. Prayer, the rosary, the sacraments, the holy sacrifice, the mass are very important. Pray especially for the youth and to end abortion. And then we talk about fasting and self-denial. Fasting is important, even if it's bread and water, even if it's only once a week. If you can't do it for 24 hours, then do it for 12. But any kind of a penance, self-denial, within moderation is, is good. Offer the fasting and self-denial to God for the salvation of souls. The value of fasting is expressed in the Latin preface. By fasting of the body, it curbs our vices, elevates our minds, and bestows virtue and reward. But, but as you know, exterior mortification, such as fasting, is important, but may, must be used with prudence and or the permission of your spiritual director. Now we'll talk about devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus. His, the promises are real. We read through the 12 promises. We'll read through just through some of them. I will give them all the graces necessary for their state of life. I will establish peace in their homes. I will bless every home where the image of my sacred heart shall be exposed and honored. I will console them in all their difficulties. I will be their refuge during life and especially at the hour of death. My dearly beloved in Christ, his promises are real. They're true. His sacred heart suffers because people sin all the time. His heart suffers. Not many people practice this devotion anymore. Christ died for ungrateful, this great ungrateful humanity of which likely most souls are going to hell. Most people don't even believe. Hell awaits many of them. They only live for the pleasures of this world. And then I think it's very important we have a devotion to St. Joseph. Again, he's a saint for our times and so very powerful. He was kind, mild, a good husband, and a good man. St. Joseph was a good foster father to Christ. He has a high place in heaven because of his goodness and mildness. And of course, St. Joseph prayed a lot. He was a quiet man. He didn't say much. Our Lord loved him, and so did Our Lady, and he took care of her. St. Joseph was the head of the Holy Family. All men should imitate his holiness. He is powerful against demons and evil spirits. We should also have a devotion to St. Michael. He's the highest angel in heaven, and he helps people. St. Michael is the defender of the Catholic Church. He defends the Catholic Church from evil spirits and demons. He goes to purgatory to pray for people and to take souls out of there and bring them to heaven. St. Michael is 
courageous. As St. Louis Marie de Montfort mentions, St. Michael listens to Our Lady all the time and helps her a lot. Everything she says, he does. He's obedient and does what she commands. Demons hate him because he was obedient and didn't leave with them. They don't even like calling him by his name, which means, who is like unto God? That was his reply when Satan rebelled. He always fights the evil spirits and demons, especially when people are on their deathbeds, he fights for their souls. And then it's obvious that St. Philomena is also a saint for our time. She was a very good girl. She was pure, committed hardly any sins, refused a throne, converted people, died a horrible death, and is feared by all the demons in hell. To St. Philomena, nothing is refused. St. Philomena was a virgin martyr who died instead of giving up her virginity. And then now I'd like to speak about sacramental. Sacramentals are holy things or actions of which the church makes use of to obtain for us from God spiritual and temporal favors. And the chief benefits by using sacramentals I'll give some examples first what a sacramental is. Blessed candles, ashes, palms, crucifixes, medals, scapulars, etc. The chief benefits are actual graces, the forgiveness of venial sins, remission of temporal punishment for our sins, health of body and material blessings, and protection from evil spirits. And there's three chief kinds of sacramentals. First, blessings given by priests and bishops. Again, for it can be homes, cars, fields, animals, etc. Exorcisms against evil spirits, and then blessed objects of devotion. And the most powerful sacramentals are first the relic of the true cross, because it contains our Lord's precious blood. And then the second most powerful sacramental is the rosary. We'll talk about that later. Every home should have a crucifix, and if possible, even in every room. Demons hate the crucifix because our Lord died on the cross to save the souls of sinners and the world from their sins. The holy name of Jesus makes demons tremble. It delivers people from illness, danger, accidents, harm, evil. So in the back, there's copies of these um, Jesus cards. You can put on your pillow, put in your wallet, in your purse, uh, different rooms in your house. It's got they're blessed, but they have a, the holy name of Jesus has incredible power. And especially in times of temptation, um, just repeat the names of Jesus and Mary over and over again. No matter what kind of temptation it's going to, the devil just has to leave. And it's an interesting story. Uh, there was a young convert in Japan uh, who was assaulted by Satan, and Satan said he was going to do some uh, injure him. And then this uh, new, newly converted soul said, um, I've got nothing t- to defend myself with except the names of Jesus and Mary. And then the earth opened up and then Satan went back to hell. So the holy name of Jesus is very, very powerful. And then St. Francis of Assisi said, as wax melts before the fire and as dust is scattered by the wind, so the entire army of evil spirits flee away at the simple invocation of the name of Mary. Again, if, we, if we're, no matter what our trouble or our doubt or our danger, we can turn to Our Lady and then she'll help us. St. Bernard said, invoke it. 
in your dangers, your doubts, your anguish. Let it ever be on your lips and in your heart. Then there will be no more wandering, no more despair, no more error, no more falling, no more fear. And then there's a the sign of the cross. You know, sometimes we can just make it very casually, but if you remember when Our Lady appeared to St. Bernadette, she was going to start the rosary, and then she couldn't even move her hand to start it. And she was wondering, you know, why? And then Our Lady made the sign of the cross very reverently and slowly, and then she could imitate her, and she never f forgot that. And then people years later would say, uh, if they make the sign of the cross in heaven, then it's the same way Bernadette does it. But don't use it, do it casually. It's a very, very, very powerful, and it's a sign of our belief in the Blessed Trinity and also our belief in the redemption. Because through the cross, there was redemption. The demons hate the sign of the cross so much because through the cross there was redemption for many <clears throat> who choose to believe and follow God's commandments. Christ died for all, but many do not choose to believe and follow his commandments. And as we know, the crucifixion was a brutal death. But he did it because he, our souls were so valuable to him. He was willing to go through that. And then, of course, there's holy water. Holy water uh, burns demons. Easter and Epiphany water are more powerful than even holy water. Easter water hurts them more and burns them more. Catholics should use sacramentals such as holy water for protection from demons, evil spirits, hatred, calamities, accidents. And uh, use it frequently. Uh, it's interesting, St. Teresa of Avila, she had believed in the power of holy water, and she had a little, like a pocket sewn in the habits of all her nuns. They always carried holy water with them. It was interesting. <laughs> okay, and then, of course, the miraculous medal. <clears throat> Our Lady has many symbols, and this is one of them. The Blessed Virgin Mary said that those who wear it will receive great graces, especially if they wear it around their neck. But if, you don't, if you're not wearing a miraculous medal, please wear it. <clears throat> Our Lady came down to show us it. And, and I remember <clears throat> years ago I was at a store in Phoenix and trying to buy religious articles and I uh, needed some miraculous medals and there weren't any. He says, what's wrong with this store? You know, you should stock. I mean, this is some, some very common all over the world. People know what a miraculous medal is. And he goes, um, there's a problem. He goes, okay, what is the problem? He goes, you know, we, these work. You know, we, ha we stock the shelves, and then they're, they're all sold, and then we buy, get some more, and they're sold. And so it's called miraculous. It's originally called the Medal of the Immaculate Conception, but it's called miraculous just by popular uh, opinion, because Pete, there were so many miracles attached to it. So with the sacramentals, of course, we don't use them as with superstitiously or in the wrong way, but the modernists have uh, tried to downplay the importance of devotion to the saints, to the sacred heart of Jesus, to the sac and then the use of sacramentals, but especially today, they're, since they're so powerful, we can use them to our spiritual advantage. And then lastly, so there's the St. Benedict Medal. And this is an oversized St. Benedict Medal. But um, it has power over evil spirits and demons. And I remember one of our priests was saying that uh, because it's so powerful, his niece was going to college, and in that dorm, there were just all kinds of really weird things happening. So, you know, he blessed uh, St. Benedict Medal and sent it to her. 
And then what happened, her room was really calm. And then the rest of the place, everything got worse. So in closing, what can help Catholics to help them persevere in these evil times? Okay, first the rosary, but every day. And then pray it. Please meditate on the mysteries. Don't just recite the words. Meditate on the mysteries. Pray the rosary well. And even if it's you're spending time pushing away distractions, trying to stay focused, okay, then you said a good rosary. Of course, the most important of all is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And then, in addition to that, not just attending Mass, but adoration of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. By doing so, then God will... And of course, you can ask Him for it, but God can give you the grace of final perseverance to make you, give you the strength to get through it to the end, to persevere. But um, just by your love and adoration, you receive many, many special graces. You know, more so than in almost anything else you can do. And then, of course, family prayer. That you insist on it. We, we must say family prayer together. And it shouldn't be a burden, but I remember the family that prays together stays together. And then later, when our family split up over religion, uh, we, never, we didn't pray together, and then it didn't stay together. The family that prays together stays together. And then getting your home blessed if it hasn't been blessed by a priest. And it's sad to visit you know, many traditional Catholic homes, and some of them don't even have an image of our Lord or Our Lady or crucifix or anything, the saints. Okay, we, again, we find a balance. But uh, just as in your homes, you've got pictures of family members and those you love. So we love above all God. We appreciate what Christ did for our redemption. So we have a crucifix. Our Lord promised so many blessings in homes when His Sacred Heart is exposed and honored. And, and of course, Our Lady told us that many souls would be saved if we had devotion in the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So, of course, we have the Immaculate Heart of Mary in our homes. But that's very important. Images of Our Lord, Our Lady, and the saints. And as I said before, a prayer to St. Michael, Uh, the St. Benedict medal, uh, fasting and self-denial. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.